But first to the headline guest tonight, my former boss, uh, former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, of course, now my new Sky News podcast partner. And he joins us now from Perth. Tony, welcome as always. Um, I'm going to get into this sort of argy-bargy about what is and isn't the Uluru Statement in a moment, but, but let's just step back and look at a, a macro assessment of this referendum campaign. Mm -hmm. You are a campaigner at heart. You know what it's like to win elections. Uh, you also beat Malcolm Turnbull in the 1999 referendum when he wanted to turn Australia into a republic. What's your reading of the Voice referendum campaign so far? Well, Peter, I don't really want to talk about the day-to-day -day ups and downs because that distracts you from the fundamentals and you've got to get the fundamentals right. And uh, I just think that this voice is wrong in principle and it will be bad in practice. It injects race into our constitution and that's wrong. It entrenches the separatism, which is at the heart of Indigenous disadvantage and that's bad and it would gum up our government, our system of government, even more than it currently is, and that's bad. So I think that to the extent that the No campaign is succeeding, it's succeeding because it is focused on the fundamentals. It's not just about a voice. It's about so much more than a voice. It's about power. It's about the power of under 4% of the population to make an advantageous treaty with reparations with 100% of the population and rewrite our history as a story of shame. And I think that the Australian public, once they know all that, uh, are very, very, very wary of this voice. Is there any risk, given the government struggling, the Prime Minister uh, you know, can't put the real detail on the table lest people actually understand what will come with his voice? Again, we'll get to that in a moment. Do you think there is a risk... Uh, given the lack of information and how uh, the Prime Minister's campaign is floundering, that the yes camp gets a bit complacent. Sorry, that the no camp, well, no uh, camp gets complacent. I, I, I think the big danger, Peter, is that uh, the yes campaign has this massive war chest. There's an avalanche of money uh, that will pour uh, into the airwaves and onto social media as soon as the Prime Minister announces a date. Not only that, but there's going to be a tidal wave of moral intimidation, including by employers such as the Victorian State Government, as we saw the other day. So I certainly think that uh, there's no room for complacency uh, amongst those who actually think that Australia is a good country uh, with a history that, on balance, we can be proud of. That's why I say this whole exercise is ultimately a referendum on Australia. And if you think Australia is pretty good, you should certainly vote no to any attempt to redo the whole country on the basis that the last 240 years have been a story uh, of persecution and racism. Well, let's go to the Uluru Statement from the Heart. The Prime Minister says it's a, it's a benign one-pager, it's a you know, pretty poster, lots of signatures around the side. We now have an FOI document out there that says, well, in fact, no, it's 26 pages or something like that along. Uh, Megan Davies, who was at Illaroo, unlike the Prime Minister, uh, one of the architects of the voice statement, she says, no, it's many, many pages long, and I've played that at the top of the program tonight. Um, you've got an FOI coming out from the Indigenous Agency saying it's many, many pages. And then late uh, yesterday or into this morning, just after Jacinta Price asked some questions, put some pressure on this Indigenous agency, uh, the FOI team, or what they said has been rolled by the CEO who's now backing in the Prime Minister. I know you've read a lot of the documents. Do you believe the Uluru Statement is a one-pager or do you believe the document that calls for treaties and, and, and financial compensation as a, part, as a percentage of GDP and all the other issues that are contained in the longer document? Look, uh, I think that Megan Davis was right uh, when she said that it was a very big document, um, uh, 18 to 20 odd pages, uh, and she was saying that repeatedly until it seemed she was lent on by the government over the last 24 hours or so. 
Look, it's very easy, Peter, in a busy public life to miss uh, the multitudinous documents that come out of government. And I suspect that until quite recently, most people at senior levels of the Albanese government had never read uh, all of the other documents associated with this whole Uluru process. It's probably only now that they've suddenly woken up to exactly uh, what they've endorsed, because what they've endorsed, as is clear from all of these associated documents, including the full Uluru statement, what they've endorsed is so much more than just this nice advisory body. It's a power grab unprecedented in Australia's history. It's a constitutional upheaval unprecedented in Australia's history. And it's essentially saying that there is um, so much in our history that basically needs to be undone or at least atoned for. Hence the stress on treaty, which will inevitably involve reparations, and on so-called truth, mm. which will inevitably involve rewriting the whole Australian story as one of shame. Now, obviously, there are things that are less than perfect in the past and there are things that are less than perfect even now. But on balance, this is a country that we can all be proud of and I want us to go forward as one equal people together.